Hello and welcome back to my garage. This time we're doing another level two EV charger. This one is from Bouge RV. Um, so I love ch checking out the different EV chargers that are on the market and seeing whether or not they're worth the value or worth the price that they're actually selling at. This specific model from Bouge RV, we're gonna get it out. We're gonna do an unboxing first. They make a couple different models. So um, I will put links in the top of the description to at least this specific one. Um, whether you purchase from Amazon or, or direct from Bouge RV, I will include both links. So, I have my NEMA 1450 here on the wall. There you go, if you can see that. And uh, we have the charger here. Let's unbox it, let's see how everything comes. Okay, welcome back to Geek Smart for another video tutorial install, or whichever you wanna call it. And today we're looking at the EV, the level one of the level two chargers from Bouge RV. So nice storage pouch for you because this one technically doesn't install so much, but I did want to do a setup video because they do I think have some mounts in here. But you can see it comes with the, uh, the storage bag, so you could technically take this with you as your portable charger as well. So it looks like we have a mount probably for the main charging piece, so that when you use it at home, it stays on the wall, but when you take it with you, you just probably slide it out. That's my assumption. Then, looks like we have, this probably is the wall mount piece for the actual uh, J1772 plug. So we'll set that there. Flip this whole bundle over. So it does come with some Velcro here. All right. And of course, I wonder if I should get my scissors out. Maybe not. I can get this. There we go. So, NEMA 1450 plug. Boom, with the protector. Set that stuff down here. And we have our actual charger itself. Now, I have, I don't have a, a J1772 vehicle. I have a Tesla, but I have a, an adapter that I can charge that comes with my Tesla. That, uh, adapts the J1772 plug, which we're gonna have on this guy, to my Tesla plug. There we go, nice big rubber cap on that guy. And then of course, the actual piece right here. I might have to just slide that off, there we go. So this is obviously the brains of the operation for the charger. Has a nice little screen there. We'll see everything that comes out of here and we'll, obviously we'll show that on there. It does have a nice protective uh, plastic piece on here that once you get installed, you can take it off or leave it on, whatever you, want to, uh, you so desire. But that said, essentially we have two products to install on the wall. This guy here, which is gonna be, and maybe I'll show you that, my assumption at least. Find out here in a second. All right, so yeah, you can even see the, the rail on this guy. Essentially, it will slide down into it on the wall. You can kind of see that the cable wasn't in the way because of how it's coiled, but uh, it holds it on the wall. And then when you want to take this with you, you just slide it out. So this level two charger becomes your home charger and your portable charger. It can be both. That's kind of the neat thing about this guy, um, but it does come with a nice wall bracket. So that's that. And then we have the actual plug piece that will allow you to store, if I'm upside down here, store this on the wall with it ready to just grab onto and plug into the vehicle. So we will install this too. Pretty deep, pretty just simple. Three holes there, three holes on that. Good to go. So let's pick a spot on the wall and uh, get going. So step one, what I'm gonna do here is uh, right now I do not have this this outlet live, so I can plug into it, not gonna hurt anything. But I'm gonna wanna figure out where can I mount the main piece based on where my outlet is. Because this pigtail from the outlet to the charger, not the longest thing in the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably mount it like this right here. So just a little bit lower than this, that way the pigtail stays right here. Uh, but I'm up off the floor enough where I feel it's not going to get wet, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it right in here. Now I have a stud actually right, running right down this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this kind of like so, right along that stud line. And it's probably going to be right about in there. Yep, stud and stud. So that's where I'm going to go. 
Now, if I'm mounting this in my house for permanent installation, I'm using all four of these holes. So two of these would go into the stud. The other two are gonna use the wall anchors that are included in the box. In this case, because I'm just doing it for a temporary purpose, I'm just gonna put the two that are into the stud, the ones that are actually gonna hold most of the weight. So, grab a couple of the fasteners that came with. And, well, now, same thing goes if I'm installing this permanently, I'm gonna get my level out my, and actually make sure this is plumb, but this looks pretty darn plumb to me. So, now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, slide it into position, and, plug it into there and we look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it unplugged for now, but let's uh, let's get the next piece mounted. Okay, so now we have the piece actually for the, the charger piece, the charger end. And what in the book, in the instruction book, they're gonna tell you to mount this at a lower height, like two and a half feet off of the ground, which is probably the smart thing to do. In this case, I already have a hole in my wall right here that I know goes into a stud. So I'm gonna use that hole for my temporary setup. But I would argue, you want to keep this in a, in a comfortable height that anybody of any height is going to easily be able to reach and unplug in and go into the vehicle. Also make sure that this little leg that sticks out is facing up because that's where you're going to put your excess cable on uh, when you're not using the charger. So grab one of the screws here. And again, I'm going to go, there are three mounting holes on this. I'm only going to utilize one for now just for this temporary setup purpose. Uh, again, if I was doing this, I would make sure that I used all three of them for uh, a permanent setup. <laughs> all right, that is gonna be definitely good enough there. Okay, so let me get the outlet energized uh, and then we'll uh, fi finish this up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready before we plug it into the outlet. <laughs> and that is getting this excess cord out and uh, organized a little bit. Now, it's gonna sit on there. So we're gonna come around and I'm just gonna hang the extra cord how I like it and spin out any of the things. Now, it's not gonna be perfect just because of the fact that it's been sitting in the package, right? But I think I have an extra curl in here. Just a really heavy duty cable. All right, and then that's gonna go on there, so I'm gonna have to get a little bit. And if there's one thing I don't like is how far it sticks out from the wall. But then again, um, that could be remedied by how I have this plugged. And I think that is how it's gonna have to go. So just like so. All right, let's see what she looks like when we plug it in, because we should be live now. All right, looks like she's booting up. Red to blue. Zero amps, 247.9 volts. We're not using anything. Selected mode is 48 amp charging. So let's take a peek here. If we hit the A, so it goes between 10 amps, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, back to 10. So that's, we're just going through how fast we want to be able to charge, right? And then the time, we can look, look at the top. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then off. So let's see what that means. Okay, so yeah, that little timer button, what happens when you hit this and you see the, the one that pops up, two, three, four, that's telling you how long you wanna delay before you wanna start charging. So obviously you wanna make sure it connects to your vehicle just fine and it goes fully green and then it'll start charging obviously once that delay ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to zero. Uh, there also is Wi-Fi on this and there is an app we can download and we can go through the settings for that. Okay, so I am on my phone right now and what I'm gonna do is in my settings, I am gonna to go to Wi-Fi and in Wi-Fi, it's actually gonna populate there. I can see the Bouge RV, whatever, you know. So I'm gonna select that. The password on these is defaulted to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna join. Now I've already opened the web address, but it is 192.168.4.1. It's just a, a, an IP address URL. Now in the owner's manual here, you can see there actually is a QR code that'll actually take you directly to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the web browser here. And as you can see, it 
Uh, I'll hit the refresh button because I have the correct address in it, but now that we are, we should be connected to the Wi-Fi. So we'll get it to, to load the website. And there we are, we have the website loaded. Uh, and in here, we're gonna see some settings, obviously, that we can do. So 48 amp is what I'm currently set at. I can adjust that if I so uh, choose. Charge time, I can set how long I want that charge time to, to go for, one hour up to 10 hours, it's all up to you. So if you don't, if you wanna go for a certain amount of time, maybe you're on solar and you wanna say, hey, it's sunny out for the next three hours, let's only charge on solar, you can choose your own thing. And then you can also choose the time to start charging. So I wanna start charging in 10 hours or whatever, that's when I wanna start and then it'll end when it ends. You can choose that all in here in the app. So it's a little more, uh, a little more information here that you can choose. Top left, looks like we have auto start, PE detect, so it can actually detect um, the uh, ground state. History, you can clear the energy. So basically how much energy have you used? And then you can clear that. You can change the password because right now it's just a factory one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would highly recommend changing that password to something more secure because that way nobody else can just automatically get into it and change your settings on you. Oh. We're gonna keep, we're gonna use cellular, oh, that's right. And then uh, factory set it, um, the CMD. So that is all the information in here. Looks like we just gotta hope back, there we go. But that's it. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. So I'm gonna revert to actually plugging this guy in to my car. And as you can see there, you'll see the, the blue status should go green. So plugged into my Tesla. My Tesla is not automatically charging. So it's not gonna start charging. It's not gonna start pulling until I tell it to actually pull. So on my, on my app, I hit start charging. And then you can see we are now charging into the vehicle. Everything is obviously, the settings are going good. Uh, if you actually look at the status, both there as well as on the app, we're looking at 16 amps pulling currently. 16 point kind of judging between there's 20 23 and it's going to vary a little bit i'm i'm a little over 200 miles of range i think right now there's 32 amps so she's charging good um right now uh yeah 224 miles of range currently in my tesla and my tesla is right now pulling it's looking for up to 48 it's but now pulling 48 amps so we are pulling 48 amps on both so both are now saying 48 amps if i actually go back to the web website 47.7 um we are good, we are charging, and then we're actually seeing how much power we're actually utilizing. Let's actually go back here. Uh, energy is probably gonna be a little bit because it's in kilowatt hours. But that is, uh, that's the Bouge RV level two charger. So that's it, that's, it's now, it's currently charging my car. It tells me if I have any problems with it. Obviously the color codes are gonna tell you what's going on with it. Um, Blue is gonna be just, it's on green, it's, it's connected to the vehicle, and then when it's flashing green, we know it's actually charging the vehicle. And we are definitely pulling full 48 amps. Uh, my car is telling me it's 48, as well as this, so we are good. Uh, and the beautiful thing about this specific charger is I have this wall mount architecture already set up now. I can just as easily slide this right off the wall and throw it in the trunk of my vehicle, and it's now my portable charger. So the nice thing about this one is it kind of fits both ranges. So uh, you can see the screen actually went dark, but it's still pulsating. So it is still charging the car. It's just not gonna show there unless you tap on this and then you can see it's still charging. So pretty cool. Good job, Bouge RV. Not a solid, a solid little product. I will say this, the cables that they use are really heavy gauge. Um, so really heavy duty, uh, which is always good to see something that um, is gonna take a, you know, especially being a mobile charger, it's gonna take a little more abuse because it's gonna go in and out. Bad thing about it is, is that it's gonna take a little bit more space because of how thick the cables are. So there is that. So that is the Bouge RV level two charger, um, 48 amp charger. Right now on Amazon, it's going for 329 bucks. Um, they probably have sales from time to time. I will put a link in the description so you can go directly to Amazon or directly to Bouge RV's website, Bouge RV's website, blah, 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 my tongue, um, and check it out for yourself. Now, the beautiful thing about this one, like I said several times now, is that this fits both a home charger and a portable charger, because it's really easy to just unplug, pop it off the wall and go, right? Um, most home chargers are on the wall and they don't go anywhere. So my typical home charger is, goes where this for, NEMA 1450 is, 
and doesn't come off the wall unless I want to put this in and do a video. I can't take it with me, so I have to have both. In this case, it does both. Now, the one thing that I would argue that I would highly recommend that Bouge RV changes is this plug mount right here. It sticks 90 degrees from the wall. So this sticks out a good foot and a half where this, this cable is. Um, so it sticks straight out and then kind of wraps back in. That, I don't like that, especially in my garage. My garage is not as wide as I would love it to be. I would love it to be an extra few feet wide. But with two cars in here, my car door, when I open it, goes all the way to basically where the charger is almost, almost touches the wall. And so I'm walking into this if I'm walking past my, uh, on the side of the car. I don't like this. They should have angled this down, even at like 45 degrees, so it sticks out maybe eight, nine inches. That would have been all the difference in the world. That would be the one thing that I would really recommend that they change is that. Everything else is good because how it mounts on the wall works great. Easy to actually remove. So in this case, I just unplug it from the wall, slide it out, stick it in the bag that it came in, and uh, now I have a portable charger. So, Bouge RV, solid product. Um, highly recommend that, you know, I've done a couple wall chargers, um, one in place and one portable. Out of the portable ones, including the one that I own for my Tesla, I actually like this one better, um, especially because of some of the settings you can have on this through your phone. Uh, that's always handy to have. So Bouge RV, solid product, well made, I will say that as well, and very simple to install. Uh, you know, if you look at how oh, star rating or whatever, how hard is this to install? This is on the lowest end of the scale. As long as you're, from, you're uh, capable of drilling a hole in the wall and mounting something, you can install this. Now I will say that the mounting hardware, I'm not a fan of. These cheap drywall anchors, I absolutely despise them um, and I would not use them unless I absolutely had to because they're garbage. Um, so I would actually add my own drywall anchors if I was to, you know, in this in the event, the, the two ones over here that I have to mount into drywall without uh, wood backing. Or I would, you know, mount a big board and put this right on it. So a couple different ways to do it. So thank you for watching this video. Please comment below, like, share, subscribe for me if you can. I appreciate you sticking to the end of the video. And as always, I will be back with more video setups and tutorials and everything. Um, here on Geek Smart and head us over to head over to techgooch.com, our, our Tech Gooch, uh, YouTube channel, to see more reviews. So thanks for watching to the end of the video. Catch you back here on a future video install. See you soon.